Good morning. Good morning. As you know, this will not be a visual. <laughs> God bless you. I was laying here and everything's happening. And, and uh, as I said, I would like to speak when everything's going through my head. I'm trying to think where to begin because everything was just going fast and everything was speeding all through the night. Um, I've got to get ready to get out of here, but it's like 4.50, I think, 4.50 or something in the morning. And uh, Try to figure out how to start. <laughs> mm. Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord. One thing I heard is that what I had planned is not what God has planned. He revealed it to me. It's not my building. Besides that, Speaking of what's happening in this world, in this world today, the shootings and the violence, there's a shift. There's an imbalance. The world is not balanced. God is not pleased with this world as we know. My voice is rough in the morning. <laughs> uh, real rough. Drinking water. Mm. Speaking and don't want to speak. Talking and don't want to talk. Telling and don't want to tell. Afraid and obedient <laughs> wow lord jesus the atmosphere the spiritual and the unspiritual are at war we have been feeding the dragon and he's growing he has grown. What is meant by that is if you notice the violent, violence, uh, the murder, the killing, the bombings, all these things have escalated over the years. And if you look through time, not all the way past the 60s, I'm talking about Coming into 20, 2001 of sorts. 1999, uh, the 9-11 and, and on forward. Uh, there has, the violence has increased because we have become more accepting of what the Bible calls sin. We have been turning our backs on our fellow man. We have progressed without success. We're not doing God's will. We're doing our own will. We're accepting things that are unacceptable. And what, pray tell, all those things? Yeah. Wow, you know what they are. Things that are we're we're accepting the same sex marriage. We're accepting same sex relationships. And God's not pleased because it's taking the atmosphere out of balance. Mm. 
he's saying don't add no more to that. So anyway, what we're failing to see We have compromised religion. We are not doing God's will. <sighs> the devil does a sleight of hand. As black people, we're running around and we're trying to fight police brutality and, and 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 the devil's defocusing us uh while we're concentrating on the police brutality he's coming back doing the sleight of hand and he's snatching medicare he's snatching the welfare programs not saying that our black people are on it and and, and uh, i'm not going to keep justifying what i'm saying because anybody knows that knows God know what I'm saying. I'm not condemning anybody, homosexuality, anything like that. I, that's not, I'm just saying what needs to be said. Anyway, we're over here looking at police brutality. And while we're over there doing that, God saying it's a sleight of hand. It's a sleight of hand. That's how the devil does. He blindsides you. It, it, it's like magic. Look over here. You know, how did a woman get sawed in half? We're looking at it. We're looking. We looking at him saw this. We see the lady in, in the in, in the in the little coffin. We're looking at her. She's in the coffin. We seen her get in the coffin. We see this box. We looked in it, it was empty. Now the lady's in it. Okay, now the magician, he's sawing. He's sawing the woman in half and we're cringing. Oh my God, he's cutting in half. Oh my God, it's gonna be two people. And then he pulls it apart and we're like, ah, but we're not seeing any blood. So how is he doing? It's the sleight of hand. And that's what Satan is doing right now, especially to black people. He, we're running around here. Oh, yeah, we fighting the police brutality because he knows that we're going to hurry up and we're going to uh, associate this brutality of 2017 with the brutality of the 60s and beyond. The dogs being sick on black people. All these type of things are African Americans that some people want to go forward with. But we're looking at all of this. All the time we over here, folks, we're getting our signs together. We're marching. We're running around. Oh, yeah, we hate the police. We've had some black people go as far as to start killing police. But while we're over here focusing on that, the devil's over here taking your Medicare. He's taking your Social Security. He's taking all these things from you. I'm not talking about it being Trump. I'm talking about what's happening. It's been happening. It's the sleight of hand. We're deep focused. We're not focusing on what we should be focusing on. And that's running around her fighting for benefits. We're listening to the rich people. The people that got that's telling you to be ashamed of what you have. To be ashamed of asking for welfare. To be ashamed of asking for government assistance. While they get rich. And you are a dummy to take and buy into that for the simple fact that the people that are telling you not to, to sign up for welfare, AFDC, uh, 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 what all these new little names they want to call it to try to propertize it. They don't want you signing up for Social Security and all these benefits, health benefits. But yet, they're taking and putting their rich money and some poor, putting their money as an investment into, into uh, private penitentiaries so they can have more black people. But it's the sleight of hand again. You're not looking at that. Mm -mm. Mass incorpor incarceration. Almost made me say a cuss word. Mass and cor oh, man, mash your butt. They not locking things up. You know what I say. 
They locking you up and putting you in jail. Focus on that. You defocusing. You running around here talking about the police beating and killing you. Talk about how they putting you in jail. That's killing you. That's a death sentence. Three strikes you out. What is the third strike? Sometimes, really, let's look at the reality of it. You got three strikes. Okay, you robbed a bank the first time. So you had, uh, it's a 10-year usually, usually sentence. Okay, uh, you did uh, three of, uh, of the 10. So you got the other sitting on the shelf, right? Okay, so then you get out here and you violate it. Okay, so that throws you back in. So you completed that 10-year sentence. So then you turn around, you get out. And you go out here and you snatch a bag of chips out of the man in the store say you took it. Then turn around, that's three strikes. So now you're in penitentiary for 25 to 30 years because your third offense was snatching a bag of potato chips. You better wake up and smell the coffee. My mama used to call it something else that's in the toilet. We're just focused. We're not focusing on things. And then we want to sit back and wonder why is this happening? Why? Anybody in the spiritual realm, you know why it's happening. We're, we're not being obedient. And I know I was talking about love, and it sounds like I'm saying free love. I'm talking about we as black people getting together. We're putting too much emphasis on running around here talking about, hey, hurry up and get married. How you going to marry with somebody when a lot of, majority of the uh, black men, the African American men are in penitentiary. If they're not in penitentiary, they're in jail. Let's go deeper. God's bringing the man. Mm. Oh, come on, Jesus. God's reminded me of what he had spoken to me earlier. You know, was it yesterday? Today is Wednesday, so yesterday. Uh, we as females, black females, we're running around here talking about. We want to. We want these, uh, we want the black man. We want him to marry us. Our true and dandy. I want to get married too. I'm on board with that. I want to get married. I want to marry a man. I, I want to get married. Yeah. I want to get married. It, it, it would be a beautiful thing. Guys, reiterate. When I'm speaking about the same sex marriage and, and, Let's put in there too. God's not pleased with that. God's not pleased with the politicians that's voting on these things about taking the benefits. He's not pleased with that. He loves his poor people. He loves his poor people. He don't want to see people without benefits. He don't want to see people in the streets begging. He don't want to see more homeless people than he see housed people. God's not pleased with that. Let's put that out there. He don't want to see nobody homosexual, bisexual, LCB, whatever. He don't want to see nobody homeless. Don't get that twisted. God cares for everybody. Had to reiterate for a moment. Getting back on this subject. We as black women, we want to run around here. Oh, yeah, I want the man and I want to get married and all this and that. But we fail, we fail the black man. We, we fail as women. Sometimes we fail, ain't no sometimes, we fail the black man when we fail to see that the majority I'm not going to say the majority. A lot of black men have been to jail. They've been to prison. And when you're filling out the job application, it asks you specifically, have you been to jail? And a lot of jobs will not hire you. Are you a felon? A lot of black men are felons. Not because they made themselves that way. Sometimes it's the way the police report has been written up. Believe that. That can take and give you again. It's like a death sentence to a black man when he goes for a job and he and, and he has to put on the application that he's been to jail. But if he don't put on there that he's been to jail, hello, what does society do? The employer, he runs a, 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 a credit report on you, which is illegal for real. Then he runs the uh, police report on you. 
Okay, you in the room. You applying for the job. It's ten white people in there. And it's two black people in there. The two black people in there got a record. The ten, let's say, maybe five of the white people don't. Who you think is going to get the job? Nine out of ten times, you're not. That's just a fact, even though you have the experience and the education. But the fact that you have been incarcerated is not going to get you a job. Maybe the little scenario is not that accurate, but you know what I'm trying to say. Black people know what I'm trying to say. Then you want this man that you care about, you love him, but you don't want to marry him because his credit score is low. So basically, you don't want to marry him because his credit score is low and he's been to penitentiary. Because that's if we want to be real about it, that's what you're saying. Because he has those two things against him. It's going to be difficult for him to get a job. But sometimes we as women, and vice versa, we we looking for that person to have the uh, big digits. We want somebody that has the job. You know what I'm saying? We want him to take care of us. We want him to bring something to the table. Really, we want him to be better than our, us on our job. We want him to bring more money to the table than what we bring. We want him to pay the LG&E. We want him to pay either pay the full amount of the LG&E, LG &E, the water and the rent. I at least bring to the table half because we're going to talk at 50-50 real quick. Yeah, I used to be there too. What TV, uh, what uh, uh, Teddy Pendergrass say, you bring 80-30, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But we have to deal with reality. That's why I was talking. I'm not totally talking against marriage. I'm just talking about the facts of marriage for the black man and the black woman. You know, it would be nice if we could keep putting our heads under our pillows and, and acting like that it doesn't exist. But it's a reality. You know, it's not all the time the black man is not going to be able to come to the table with all the rent. He's not going to be able to get the high-profile jobs all the time because of his past or because of her past. Believe me, I've been there because of my past. So because of your past, you're not going to be able to do that. So these are the things we need to focus on. Let's fo focus on, I don't like that name, mass incarceration. Being locked up. More black people in jail than it is whites and any other minority being in jail for little petty crime. That's what we need to focus on, how to make that change, how to get the brothers and the sisters that are in penitentiary, how to get them out when they're serving extra sentences that the average white person doesn't, that are not sentenced to. If we go through the court records, we know that to be a fact. So let's talk about that type of slavery because that is a form of it. So why are we running around here all extra, extra hype on um, Police brutality and pulling sand. Why don't we get together as black people? You covering the sand, talking about stop police brutality. I can't breathe and Black Lives Matter. Okay, what about the black lives that's in penitentiary? Let's let's focus on that. Let's talk about how to get them out. Let's take and go and and and, 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 and sign some paperwork and go to the politicians that are part of this incarceration situation. And let's talk to them. Let's start voting people in that can take and get our black people out of jail. Let's focus on that for a minute, you know. And then maybe we can start talking about marriage. Also, when we're talking about marriage for a black person, let's start accepting a man or a woman for where they are. Let's stop running around here talking about, oh, baby, I got to have you. You got to be working in, uh, 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 you got to be a, 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 the blue-collar blue worker. You know what I'm saying? I take a brother and he's working at McDonald's. He could be working at White Castle, which White Castle pays ten dollars an hour. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying it's unrealistic to want these fourteen and fifteen dollars because believe me, you have to count the cost. I had taken a budget class. So even when you make a fourteen dollars, depending on once you add in your travel, your lunch, your bills. The distance to the job, how difficult it is to get there, what stress and strain it's going to put on you, if it is going to put that on you. You count up the cost. The Bible tells you that. Count up the cost uh, about things that you're going to do, especially when you're building things. But count up your cost on that, you know. So basically what I'm saying, love a person. 
we got to start putting that love first. Like I said, I'm not just talking and preaching to you. I'm talking to t and preaching to myself. I had to change. I have to change. I'm looking for that. I ain't, I'm not messing with nobody unless they coming in up in here and they're going to help me paying all these bills. Well, hello. What if you marry that man? I don't care if it's 2020, 2025. Sickness and death is going to come. Man is not going to ever be able. I'm telling you now. He can take and do, uh, make his fake meat. I was just reading some articles. Man, I didn't know that a lot of the corn and stuff like that is fake. But I'm not going to divert from the conversation. But we eating fake meat. We eating fake corns and stuff like that. Man grown and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? But man's not going to ever be able to stop death. It's going to come. What if you marry that man? You got that black man. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's that? Uh, not I can do bad by myself. Uh, Medea's movie. Uh, Diary of a Mad Black Woman. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Peep it. Peep it. Peep it. I'm talking about the stage play, not the movie, not the movie. The stage play. I like all of Tyler Perry's uh, stage play more than I do the movies. The movies divert from, from the what he's really saying. That's my opinion. Anyway, uh, Dagger of a Mad Black Woman, but real talk. You marry this man. You got this fan brother. You know, I'm sticking with brother. You got this fan brother. You know. He's up there, uh, I mean, he's making, he's getting raises, you know what I'm saying? He's up in a uh, 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 hundred some thousand dollars a year, you know what I'm saying? He's balling, you know, he, he's got the bins, you know, he's got the 2017 bins. You know, he, he has his own house, plus he owns some property. He has all that. Oh, uh, yeah, you, you got your little business, you know what I'm saying? You got yourself to, what you call together, so you get with him and... You know, yeah, he's a marrying king, you think. So you marry him. Unbeknownst to you, six months into the marriage, he's in a car accident. I, I, he gets shot. You know, and, and, and let's, take the, uh, let's take the focus off the bullets. Let's go deeper with that. He gets cut. He gets stabbed with a butcher knife. He gets stabbed <laughs> with a piece of glass, a box cutter, you know. Okay. He's incapacitated. He can't work anymore. He's confined to the bed. Not even the wheelchair. He's confined to the bed. He's bedridden. You know. He can't talk and he can't walk. So what's going to happen? Oh, he had all of that money. But he didn't have the proper insurance. Yeah, I heard you thinking. I heard your little brain tweaking. Yeah, if he gets sick though, he's got up. Uh, a disability insurance. Nah, he didn't get no disability insurance because he was balling and he wasn't thinking about the future. He was thinking about now. And that's a possibility. So then you're losing the house and you're losing the car and you're losing everything, but you still got to take care of him. Oh, by the way, they're cutting the benefits. So you can't just go and apply because you don't have no money now. So there's no welfare. There's no uh, free medical nothing. Not even from the hospital. What you going to do? You're going to still stay there and take care of that bedridden man with your salary and your money and with your medical benefits because now you're married and now you're one. So your, your, your burden is his burden. Your bill is his bill and vice versa. So what you going to do? That property, the taxes and all that has to be paid. All the cars as well as all of your house, the LG and the water and all that has to be paid. What you going to do? Yeah, it seems like a bleak scenario, but that's reality. Those things do occur. So what I'm saying, again, is we need to start looking at the black man for where he is and love him for where he is and start putting him on a pedestal instead of downing him. We would see a significant change. A man can find himself when he has confidence in himself as a black man. Not as a black man in society. Not as a black man in the white man's world. Not as a black man in the people's world. Not as a black man in anybody's world. As a black man within himself. When a black woman Places him on a pedestal. 
and identifies him as a black man, as a man of importance. And he finds the love of God within himself and his focus and his dreams and his vision. Then you have a win. When a black man knows who he is and what he's about and where he came from. I'd rather have that than some money any day. Any day. Because we can survive. We 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 got caught up in the world. I, I see a lot of our defocus. We got caught up in the world and we start accepting other people's ideas of who we are and what we should become. Anyway, that's not popular conversation. And I heard the the little genius man talking. Well, I put him on a pedestal when he get a job, when he stopped sitting on my couch, when he stopped doing this. All I can say is I said what I said and what needed to be said. God bless you, and you have a wonderful day, and I'll try to upload this before I leave out this morning.